the leader of the house on a point of order. Mr. Speaker. Let's go to Conchetta Fear of Randy Wells, whom you now know very well, and Susan Templeman, the very good Federal Labor member from Macquarie. It is the most marginal seat in the country, by the way, 0.19%, and the electorate centres around the Blue Mountains in New South Wales, the Hawkesbury River, and then places that Australians are familiar with, Bathurst and Lithgow. I'm going to ask Susan later a couple of questions on bushfire and flood, because, without hearing her answers, I'll bet you Paris to peanuts these people have been forgotten. Ladies, thank you both. If I could just go to Victoria Conchetta, you have seen that hideous stuff that I played tonight from Melbourne, wretched police brutality. How does this happen, Conchetta, in Australia? Well, Alan, I haven't actually seen the footage because I've been in estimates, but uh, police brutality shouldn't occur here in Australia. But regrettably, what we're seeing in Victoria is very much a police state. Now, um, I know that the citizens of Victoria are, are fed up and understandably it, um, it could induce them to get very aggressive but the reality is Alan that they should demonstrate their dislike uh, at the ballot box and that's really where it should uh, be kept for. I know but nonetheless people have got to survive with all this. Uh, Susan welcome again to the program. How does this happen in Australia? It can't be Australia it is surely. It is awful to see how distressed people are in Victoria and really though this lockdown shouldn't be happening because we should have had a proper quarantine program and we should have a really effective vaccine rollout and none of this would then be happening. I mean do you think though that, that, that Susan I'm asking you that this has now gone so far this is the big worry to me that civil disobedience may not be far away. Look, I worry about a lot of things in Victoria and places where this virus is escaping, whether it's Victoria or whether it's New South Wales on the south coast. There are businesses that are going to be impacted. I come out of small business. You've got a feel for businesses that have been getting through and then smashed with a lockdown, but workers without pay. People, people are really struggling. Yeah, and I... the way to solve this is with a good quarantine program but, and, but see, and Susan, great vaccines. But, but, but Susan, I have quoted over and over and over again to both of you, Conchetta, I'll come to you in a minute. World mm. authorities from Oxford, Stanford and everywhere who say that lockdowns do not work. Lockdowns have no epidemiological justification. I just wonder which experts we're listening to. Conchetta, I want to go to something else. You, you speak with authority mm. on a range of issues in relation to foreign affairs. Your outspokenness has landed you in trouble with your own party. Turnbull didn't like it. What do you say to the news today that 209 Australian children are stuck in India without parents. Now this was, you've just come from Senate Estimates, this was revealed in Senate Estimates. Conchetta, what would the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade spokesperson, this Lynette Wood, mean when she denied they were unaccompanied minors because most were with family members or guardians? So to these toffee-nosed, overpaid bureaucrats, children don't need parents so long as there's a family member or a guardian? Conchetta. Alan, there was an exchange today uh, in Estimates, but uh, Let's not forget that many of these minors uh, have travelled uh, to India and I know many in the uh, uh, Indian Australian community often send their children to be with their grandparents and yes. relatives in India. Yes. So these children, are these minors are with their parents and let's, uh, with, with relatives, but let's not forget that their parents gave consent for them to go. But the reality is they are now there and we do need to do everything that's possible. We want to see the families reunited, but regrettably, as a consequence of the Qantas uh, rules, they can't fly home unaccompanied. And so, therefore, we have to operate on a case-by-case -case basis, Alan, and work with their parents oh. in Australia to, to, to get them back. And that's what we're trying to do oh, and give dear. them as much assistance as but we so can. And in some... Sorry, Alan, I was yep. just going to say yep. the evidence that has emerged is that in some cases uh, we have to, of course, have the consent of their parents so that if they do come back to Australia a with setup. a parent, person who's not related to them, they have to have that consent. What a setup, Susan, we seem to have a government here which abandons veterans. It wants to prosecute some on untested evidence from the Brereton Report, abandon our Afghan friends who stood by our soldiers and now in India show little care for 209 Australian children. I mean... What are your thoughts about this? You've got children. Uh, I really feel for the families with a child overseas. I have someone, in, a family in my electorate in exactly this situation. Uh, they sent their two-year-old home with, with their, the grandmother because they're, um, they're 
house burnt down, their business and their home burnt on fire, caught on fire, just a, a house fire. And and yet here they are, nearly 18 months later, their now three-year-old can't get back. We've managed to get permission for the three-year-old to come home, but uh, his aunt isn't allowed to accompany him. And so there's um, young Ryan, desperate to come home and see his mum and dad. Mum and dad and brother oh, are wow. desperate to have him oh, home. Living. It, it, we really oh, need to be showing oh, some compassion here. Oh, oh, 209 kids. Conchetta, uh, I raise this issue mm. of Greta Thunberg, this 18-year-old, spouting rubbish at an international symposium on climate change in New York in 2019. She was 16 then. Politicians and business people from around the world. She said, amongst other dribbling nonsense, people are dying, entire mm. ecosystems are collapsing. Mm. We're at the beginning mm. of mass extinction. This stuff, Conchetta, is being taught in English classes in our schools. Can you understand how this contributes to teenage suicide when this girl is unchallenged and kids actually believe we're at the beginning of a mass extinction? Who's standing up to this rubbish? Alan, when I went to school, I was, I was told that uh, carbon dioxide was plant food and vital for the health Correct. of the planet. Correct. Whereas now what we are seeing uh, in the schools is this um, zealous ideology being taught by activists, um, not thinking that down track there will be knock-on effects, there will be potential uh, effects on the mental health of these Definitely. children. It Definitely. really is uh, yeah. appalling. How would you feel, Susan, if your children had to study this stuff in school? Well, I think the science has changed a bit from when Connie and I were at school, and maybe you too, Alan, so I want them to be taught the science. Well, we like but them when to be taught you, the but, truth. The truth. Well, well we'd well, like when them you, taught the truth. When you what talk she's about... Saying, what she's the, saying is not the truth that we're heading to well, mass extinction. And this is affecting when, kids, Susan. Well, I, uh, kids are really struggling. And, and uh, look, I'm going to a funeral tomorrow of a 14-year-old who mm. took their own life. Oh. And we have really big problems, in, especially in my part of the world, in the Hawkesbury and Blue mm. Mountains. Yeah. Uh, I've been trying to get a headspace for the Hawkesbury because we do have a lot of mm. uh, anxiety, depression well, and suicide Well, just on that anxiety ideation. and depression, I want to just finish here. I mean, floods and bushfires, I mean, you faced it all in your electorate. There's a charity called Aussie Battlers, the president, Karen Sparks, has said that things have come to a stop for many people. Everybody rushes in to help at the beginning. What happens now? There's a disaster relief grant scheme. Just very quickly, have your constituents oh, uh seen all of this? Yeah, Alan, you know what it's like. There's a flurry at the start and then yeah. th not a lot seems to hit the ground. You know, we are, it's it's weeks and weeks after a flood and people seem to have forgotten it, but gee, the problems remain. And the big one is landowners with massive holes in the side of their land on the riverbank and they need, pe they need governments to get together and help them fix yeah. that problem. I know, see, Conchetta, just a quick one. I mean, there are people in Canberra live in a splendid world, high pay air conditioning. If people are moving back to mouldy, decrepit properties, or even worse, are homeless, some are still waiting for their claims to be processed. One woman just wants a home because her husband's recovering from cancer. Who do these people turn to, Conchetta? Well, Alan, can I just say, um, there, was a, there were ADF personnel that went in initially from the Commonwealth. That, the emphasis then shifted to the state and the local government. And I understand Susan and other MPs in the local area, state MPs, are getting regular briefings from Resilience New South Wales that is now doing the assessment in relation to the appropriate recovery work, a lot of which is to do with state issues. I understand that that further request for assistance is going to be made to the Commonwealth very soon and then the oh, Commonwealth oh. will assess the assistance oh. that needs to be given. So oh. I'm sure, Susan, on those individual claims, we oh. all get requests oh, and I think it's important for us to pursue oh, them. Susan. Alan, I mean, we do, we get them. I know we do, that, we go I mean, to what the What do these people do in the meantime? Just a quick final comment, Susan. What do they do? Yeah where governments are not working fast enough in these disasters. We've seen it in the bushfires, we're seeing it in the floods. For, absolutely. Great to talk to you both. Thank you for your time. Always appreciate it. We'll be back after the break with more Alan Jones and, of course, the great lady.